Full cross. Oh, they look, and Hannafin Shiori thought about going to the left. Then he thought about going to the right. Whoa, the Astons whoa, whoa. might. The Astons might change position, but the Porsche is going to stay in front. No, the Astons stay as they are. In fact, so look, and Hannafin, <laughs> he was the clown in the pack, if you like. He started to zigzag before the greens actually came out, and now the gap starts to extend a little bit. Good exit out of Rivatza from Michel Gatting in the Iron Dames Porsche. Well, 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 but he's got a good run down here. Is Valentino Hazard at close. some point is going to have a crack at this, isn't he? This is the battle for third place. Vector Sport into Europol, Edex Sport, Drugovic, Dillman, Van Utert. They're 30 seconds back from the lead pair. They're not going to do that on pace, but there is a Podium position still up for grabs here. This, though, is all of the podium positions up for grabs in LMGT3. Euro International, by the way, from Ultimate and Team Virage still in LMP3. And it looks like it's Euro International's race here if they don't have to pit, and I'm pretty certain they don't. Good lines through Piritella and down into Aqua Minerale for Michel Gatting in the pink Iron Dames Porsche. And the racing spirit of Le Mans, Aston Martin, uh, does appear to be slightly better of the two Astons. Lorcan Hannafin just that bit more distant. Or is he deliberately doing that, thinking they're going to take each other off here and I need to have ample time to react? So far, that's not happening, though. Ten Shell minutes. was a bit ragged on the exit, but she's managed to weather that storm. Ten minutes to go. Hannafin allows the P2 car to go through. Try and use it as a pick, maybe. You can see it coming. So that Nielsen car that was off in the gravel earlier in the piece, Albert Costa now at the wheel, that John Fowl started that car. Adam Alley leading in LMP3 for Euro International, ahead of Mathieu Luhay. 27 seconds to gap. Luhay's under big pressure, though, from Gillian Omrion now. They're just less than a second apart for second and third positions on the P3 podium. Dusty moment ahead of them. Hannafin just dropping back away a, a little for the moment here. And, in fact, he's got a warning flag for track limits now. This is the battle for, for second. and third, yeah. Yeah. So Mathieu Luhay and Gillian Henriot. Luhay has been racing LMP3s and LMP2s as well for a number of years. Gillian Henriot is the new kid on the block, having won in the Ligier European Series, having then won in the Michelin Le Mans Cup with Virage, and now on into LMP3 in the ELMS. And this could be a, a great result for Gillian Henriot, but Mathieu Luhay uh, does... He takes you know, some distracting, some pressurising to force a mistake from him. Moment, by the way, Shannon Malaisi fending off Louis Delatraz, Panis Racing from AO by TF. Just keeping an eye on the pace behind them. They are being caught by the chasing trio, but I think the gap is just too large. This is our leader, four seconds the good, Shannon Malaisi from Louis Delatraz. And that uh, gap... It's a warning flag, by the way, um, to Andrea Colorelli for the contact with car 57. It doesn't say which which of the two contacts that was. Well, that to me is the bit where the Calderelli, El Calderelli elbowed um, when, the 57 out onto the grass on the exit yes. of Toza, which rather suggests to me they haven't yet looked at that moment into the yellow flag zone yeah. for Capietto being off the road, not Capietto. Uh, yes, Capietto at yes. the top of the hill at Piritella. So, so I that think that's going to be looked at yet, isn't it? And uh, was the overtake legit or not? Well, it looks to me as if, potentially, Hannafin's tyres have hit that cliff. However, Michel Gatting having to utilise a set of tyres that has cer have certainly done a 30-lap stint or so, although bear in mind that that Rahel Fry stint was littered with a full-course yellow and probably would have had the safety car in it as well. Uh, don't count out at this stage the fourth-place car, because just looking at the speed of Daniel Serra, and it is impressive, he is catching them at two seconds a lap right now, Okay. and he is five seconds back from the lead. 
Again, it probably needs to be much more measured pace from Michelle Gatting to make sure she's not absolutely too much of the tyre. Whereas to Daniel Serra, you, you reckon the Ferrari did uh, change tyres. 137, he did full full, uh, full tyre yeah. uh, change, I'm Which sure. Which enables but. that car now to do the 143s. Uh, with some consistency, maybe even drop into the 142s on occasion. So, yeah, 57, the Dayglow yellow car guy car. Here it is, having to make way for the 28 EDEX sport car of Jop van Aertu, who slots through at Rivatsa 1. So here's the point. He will lose a little bit of time here, but he can now follow those LMP2 cars at unreduced speed as they're having to deal with it. This is good moment for Daniel Serra. This next lap is so critical for his chances to be on the podium of this race. That was a slow one for Louis Delatraz in the number 14 car. It's 137 last that's time the through. crash between the, third, the second and third place cars, and that's put the crash car. Julien Henrion off the road, so Mathieu Lehay and Henrion, well, they're still very soft, they're still they very close to one another. So this is a this is a tense time for for uh, Michelle Gatting as through come this battling pack of LMP twos. Still she retains that gap. Here comes Daniel Serra catching Locke and Hannafin. Um, there's Hannafin in the pink and half pink, half blue Aston Martin, looking for the bright yellow car guy Ferrari. There. Valentin has close, just dropping away a little bit this time. Or is he wary of that LMP2 car, the 77, that wants to get by at the next opportunity? Look at the gap now between the Aston in second and the Porsche in third. And in fact, the 77 of Bent Viscal, who went off in the gravel, remember, at Toza not too long ago, but did rejoin. And that car can clear Michel Gatting well before the two Rivatsas. It's four and a half minutes. And if there was pace in the cars, you'd see, I think, the gap's changing at this stage. And I think Shah Malaysia has broken the resolve of the AI TF car. Well, it was Delatraz doing a 137, I think, the lap before last. And he must that must have been traffic-induced. And all of a sudden, a three and a bit second gap became seven, or six and a half at least. And that's just given Charles Milesley the required gap. And Delatraz, not that his heart will sink that readily in motor racing, to be honest. He's always revved up to do well, but six and a half seconds is surely too much of an ask. Here's the fight for second and third again in LMP3. Adam Ali so grateful not to be involved with this, but it, will it be Mathieu Lehay or will it be Gillian Omrion to finish second? There's really nothing between them. Omrion is clearly the quicker car, and he steps out to the left. That will give him the inside line into Tamburello, unless Mathieu Lehay can... Got him. got him, surely, yes. Great car placement as well from fellow Frenchman Gillian Omrion. A tad younger than Mathieu Lehay, but sometimes Mathieu just has to hold his hands up and say that was a better run out of Rivatsa and down the main straight. And Gillian Omrion goes from strength to strength. Absolutely. While we're watching this, I can tell you that Daniel Serra is right on the boot lid of the Aston Martin. Great stuff. Battles in every class. Alex Quinn under pressure in the latter, uh, last three minutes of this race from Mathieu Vazivier for the lead in LMP2 Pro-Am. Matthias Besch in that fight as well. One, two, three, covered by four seconds. This is the lead battle for LMGT3. And the 22, Ulrich, are involved in that. Tr tricky for Michelle Gatting. Did she, would she let the LMP2 car through? She couldn't really afford to because then the Aston Martin would get the place. Well, this is the battle for third place overall. These three cars are the cars contesting that position. Felipe Drugovic of Brazil, Tom Dillman of France, Jot van Aerten of the Netherlands. It's two minutes left. And it is, at the moment, the Vector Sport car, the black and white machine, which is out front from the principally yellow-nosed 43 of the championship leaders into Europol competition. Sebastian Alvarez, who had to start the race from the pit lane. Vlad Lomko, who did the middle stints. And now Tom Dillman is up the inside. Valentin Hasklo thought about an overtake at Toza. He's running out of opportunities, though, now. And that Aston does look strong coming out of Villeneuve and into the Toza hairpin. But that's one of the chances gone now for the rapid Frenchman. 
in the racing spirit of Le Mans car of Switzerland. Two more laps after the one they've completed for this four hours of Imola. Car 97 under investigation track limits. That's Lorcan Hannafin. That's not good. That tends to go in one way and one way only. Drugovic over the line. Dillman, Jock van Outer. You can't quite throw a blanket over them, but they're really not very far apart at all. And yes, the 97 car now dancing the tightrope as to whether it will finish on the podium or not because of that penalty hanging above Lorcan Hannafin's head. He, he's got to ignore at this point. Yeah. Under a minute on the clock, it's this lap and one more. Do the team at uh, Kessel tell Daniel Serra that the car's under investigation ahead of him for those track limits, and therefore is he going to push even more? Or is he just? Are they just going to say no? Just stay where you are. He's under a the Kessel Racing car is under a second from second. Well, good point. Yes. So the two Aston Martins within touching distance of a rapid Daniel Serra. The problem is finding the best opportunity to overtake around here. It is tricky in places, particularly in the heavy GT cars. There's the race leader. We'll, we'll remind you, Xiaomi Lacey on lap 132 currently six seconds on the clock five four but the finish line is there so we'll go round again a couple of seconds were left in fact for 65 but it'll be a further 4.9 kilometers the gap back to louis delatraz nine seconds now though for you would ask yourself did they make an error there why, why, why did they not just blend out of the throttle and, yes. and finish the race there and then? Maybe Charmin Lace is having too much fun. <laughs> I mean, he's on fairly... Oh, Sarah is through. Sarah's up to third. Sarah is past Lorcan Hannafin up in third place. OK. Well, um, Lorcan's been told to tidy up his racing lines and uh, that has allowed... There he is, Daniel Sarah in the day glow yellow, the highlighter yellow Ferrari through again. Bear in mind the GT3s, the LMGT3s, oh. as that's the 88 car off the road. Uh, side by side, this is for third place. But I'll remind you that the LMGT3s have to go around once again because it's uh, the overall leader that dictates the race distance. So they've got another lap of this fabulous circuit here in Emilia Romagna. Third, fourth, fifth in the LMP2s as the LMGT3s remain in the same order somehow. And uh, it must be down to the threads now on these tyres of Michel Gatting. But Valentin Hasclo cannot force an error from the stern uh, and sort of concrete-like um, Michel comes. Gatting. It's the race leader, though. 65 will be Charmi Lacey, and he crosses the line to take the victory in the four hours of Imola for 2024. We've almost forgotten about the race winner because so much else is happening elsewhere within this race. Here comes Daniel Serra. Now, how many of these cars can he overtake on the closing lap within LMGT3? Looking very likely that Louis Delatraz will finish second in this year's four hours of Imola. He does. And um, he goes across the line now to confirm that. Vector Sport playing the final podium position. Can't take my eyes off this. No. This is an absolute cracker. He's in the toe of the Aston Martin. Comes the, the inside. Is the room there? There isn't. This is going to help Michel Gatting, isn't it? Because now all of a sudden Valentin Hasclo has to defend, defend, defend all the way to the finish. I've got Pro Racing take LMP2 Pro-Am. That's Alex Quinn, who was put into the 20 car for the final stint. We're not very far away from Adam he goes. Ali. Adam Ali across the line in the LMP3 to take victory. It's Serra late on the brakes. He's ripped the rear of the Aston Martin off the car, but that doesn't matter. It'll actually mean he's a bit lighter now for Valentin Hasclo to pull it out of Rivazza and still to finish second. But Michel Gatting will win by a country mile compared to the most of the final bit of the stint as the bumper goes flying off towards the barrier. And that's what it means to everyone associated with Proton competition 
and with the Iron Dames project, how on earth did Michelle Gatting get that car to the finish after Rahel Fry had done a stint and a half on the very same set of good years? Staggering stuff. What a great element. You know, we've been talking for most of the year about LMGT3. Its day will come. It will arrive today. That was absolutely cracking stuff. What a race from the 85 crew. What a race for the supporting cast as well. It was mainly clean.